Hey everybody, this here is a Dell Latitude D630 notebook computer, and this had, had a little issue since I got it. When you first cold start it, at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see lines of colors along the screen. And after a few minutes or so, that's actually about a minute or so to be, to be um, technical these lines will gradually go away and then of course the picture on the screen will look just fine so what I'll try to do is I'm going to um, what I decided to do anyway is I'm going to replace the internal cable that goes from the motherboard to the LCD screen itself some people have said that these can go bad from time to time and cause this issue Now, of course, this notebook does have an option for an NVIDIA GPU. And, of course, as we all know, those tend to get too hot from faulty cooling designs and have to be reflowed or reballed. This laptop has the integrated Intel graphics. So, that's already knocked out as one of the possible issues. So, the Intel graphics is fine. I plugged up to an external monitor and I don't get these lines or anything on the screen. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, to tear the slot top down so I can replace the cable. Now normally I don't make many videos about working on laptops because they are a fairly new thing to me. Of course I've been working on desktops since 2005 so I've had plenty of experience with desktop computers. But laptops on the other hand I'm still kind of new with. I can do basic repairs such as re replace the memory, that sort of stuff. I've done a couple of tear down to laptops to make repairs but it's not something I really like to do but of course you have to learn and this is learning experience right here the biggest thing about laptops is from brand to brand things can be a little bit different between one another of course laptops are more fragile you have little bitty screws to work with you have different kinds of little bitty screws you have to keep track of all of them and I mean you have to be very careful when you working with the small components in laptops because I mean things are more fragile so the first thing you'll do anytime you get to work on a laptop is of course you'll remove the battery and of course unplug it from your power source if it's plugged into an adapter you lift the battery out of place next what you have to do is <clears throat> ground out the motherboard. Press and hold the power button to be sure that the motherboard has no electrical charge in it. Most laptops, when you go disassemble them, you begin by taking screws loose from the bottom side. And actually what I'm doing right now is I got a tutorial on disassembling a Dell Latitude D620 which is pretty much the same concept as this in terms of how it's built because like I say these are pretty this is something pretty new to me I'm gonna pull that back up because I went to a different site Let's see if I can find it here okay <clears throat> what we're going to do here is we're going to remove the hard drive first thing. Removing a hard drive from a notebook is fairly simple in most cases. Usually you have a small little plate you have to remove. Or in this case with Dells, you remove two screws and it just slides right out. So let me go ahead and get these screws popped loose here. And the thing about laptops like I was saying is um, they're more difficult to work on and that's why you'll typically find higher repair bills when you have a laptop service compared to when you have a desktop service 
unless of course you're replacing a hard drive or upgrading the memory because that's pretty simple to get to but if you want to replace your CPU your Wi-Fi card or anything like that and you usually a lot of cases it's pretty difficult to get to you gotta do some you gotta do a pretty good bit of tear down just to get to it so anyway I got the two screws removed and the hard drive should just slide right out pretty simple there's a hard drive One important thing to keep in mind, it's really important to keep track of all your screws and stuff because, like I said, laptops have all sorts of different sizes of screws. So what you can do is take your paper and a pencil, and draw these some circles, and drop the certain screws into those circles and label those circles for whatever they go to. The next step will be to remove this hinge cover. There's a small indentation here on this notebook to where you'll put a screwdriver in, a flathead screwdriver, and just begin popping this out of place. Just be very careful so that you don't break anything. And they set this to the side. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the keyboard. And there are three screws. One here, one here, and one here. We've got to remove those three. Okay, all the screws are removed. One thing to keep keep in mind when you're working on laptops and stuff is it's a good idea to magnetize your screwdriver so that way the screws will stick to the screwdriver so that way you won't lose them as easy. Now the keyboard should lift out of place. And of course be easy on it so that way you don't mess it up. To detach the keyboard from the system, you have to pull this little piece out so this little lever can unlock. This lifts up, and there's a little thing here you pull on, and this will pull the keyboard ribbon loose from the motherboard. Now I just set the keyboard to the side. Next thing we'll do is uninstall the memory. And this Dell, this particular Dell, has a very unsimplified design for upgrading the RAM. One DIMM is located under the keyboard, while the other is under the motherboard on the back side. That's typically where you'll find both of your DIMM slots on a laptop. But in this case, they have one, like right in the middle between the keyboard and the main board itself, and one in the typical area where you would usually install your RAM. Now not all Dells are like this, some are actually really simple, which I'll have a video on upgrading the CPU and an Inspiron laptop here pretty soon. It's probably the most simplified and most straightforward laptop I've ever seen. Anyways, this one dim is out, now I gotta flip it over. So let's close this back up. Turn this thing over. And now we'll be taking this door off. <clears throat> Let's set the door to the other side. And here's the other dim. Of course, set your memory to the side. Now we can move on to the next step. 
so which, this will be to remove the DVD burner. See, this latitude, I mean, there's some things that are really neat about it, and there's other things that I don't like. Of course, the memory upgrading process is not one of the things I like, but removing the DVD burner is very simple on this laptop. Press this button, this pulls out. Get this in the video so you can see. Have a watch of this. The burner is out. Now, how simple is that? Move on to the next step here. We want to remove the LCD screen, which that'll be what I'll be actually going into. But at the same time, I'm looking to get the Core 2 Dual Processor out of this laptop too to install into a different one. So I'm doing two things with this laptop. I am replacing the screen cable and putting in a different CPU. Okay. So here, so you can find it, here is the screen cable right here. This pulls out and gently pull it loose from its little track. And I have to pull up a different site on how to actually get into the screen itself. Also pull loose the wires going to the wireless card because those are tied in with the screen. Yeah, usually in 99% in of cases, the antenna for your Wi-Fi card is actually in the screen or lid of your notebook. That's something you didn't already know, but anyways. Let's go ahead and get this loose here. These little things just pop right out of place. And go ahead and get this cable here loose. Alrighty. Now, flip the laptop back over, and this time we're looking for screws that are labeled D. You might be able to see here we have a D here. It's the bottom of the video, but if it's in full screen, you should be able to see it. There's a D here, and there's a D over here. Those screws go to the mounts that hold the display on the computer, so. Go ahead and pull those loose. Unscrew these, I mean. And set those to the side. Drawing in a circle on my little paper here to tell me where those screws go. Now I'll move the other one. Okay, we have a few more screws removed. I'm looking at this website. So we gotta remove these screws out of the back. So we have one here, one here, and another one over here. So I'm gonna remove those all. See, now the screen should just slide right out. Let's go ahead and flip this thing over. And let us see. I think it will slide right out. It is. It's sliding right out. Of course, get this thing back open. Of course, be careful when you're pulling it out because you got got... Um, of course, your screen cable and your Wi-Fi cables that go into the notebook itself. So we got to finish getting the screen cable out. Now the LCD screen is loose. I'm going to set the bottom portion of the laptop to the side. I'm going to pull up a website on how to actually get into the screen so I can replace the cable. There's little rubber thingies that are on the inside portion of the screen to help protect the screen when you close the lid. 
These also cover up screws, so we're going to pull these off and set them to the side. And I believe it's only the round pieces that have screws under them. Okay, so we got these all pulled off. Let's now go ahead and get this screen taken apart. And of course, these screws are glue on top of them. Okay, next step here is to gently remove this bezel. Okay, here's the front bezel. I had to use a little, had to use a little bit of help from a screwdriver because there's little plastic pieces that snap in together. Of course, you have to be very careful when getting these things loose because this is very thin. It could break very easy. Anyways, we'll set to the side. And our next step here is to remove the screws that hold the LCD screen to the shell. I'll we'll go ahead and do that now. Now I'll go ahead and lift the LCD screen out of place. And set this to the side. And here's the back side. Of course, note the don't touch warnings here. So now I'm going to go ahead and replace this cable. This side here pulls out, and let's go ahead and pull this side out. There's two latches you have to pull on. And the cable should pull right out, and it does. Now we're going to install the new cable. That's cool. Of course, keep in mind to install it exactly how the old was orientated. This thing's been in a package, so it's going to get stretched back out to the way it was. And plug this side into the inverter. This side plugs into the control board. Okay, cable was installed, and pretty much from here on out, in terms of reassembly of the screen, the process just goes in reverse. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is replace the processor in this computer. I'm getting the Core 2 Duo 2.5 GHz CPU out of this machine so I can install it into a different computer. So, the next thing I'm going to do here is we're going to remove the palm rest. In this computer, all the screws that hold the palm rest together have a little P next to them. I'm going to remove those. This will be my second time being in this notebook, and so I made a mistake of installing a screw too early. So normally I'd be removing a screw from there, but the screw is actually up under the palm rest because I installed it way too early. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to go ahead and remove the Wi-Fi card just to get it, make sure it's out of the way. It's probably not a requirement, but it's, it helps to get it out of the way. pulls right out. 
This is an example of a PCI Express card inside of a laptop, much smaller than what's on a desktop. The interface is about the same size though. Continue removing screws. Okay, so we actually we got to go ahead and remove the coin cell battery, which is a CMOS battery. Disconnected from the motherboard. Next step, we gotta unscrew some screws on the bottom of the notebook. Okay, now all the screws are removed. Let's go ahead and unsnap this palm rest. And also, if you haven't done already, unplug this battery. I think I mentioned it earlier, just, but this will be sure. Anyway, it's like I was saying, when you go to unsnap plastic components on notebooks, be very careful because the plastic is very fragile. And of course, if you pull too hard, it may break, and that's something you do not want to do. So let's go ahead and gently pull this loose starting from the back of the notebook and toward the front and of course the thing about laptops is screws can be sneaky you may think you may have all the screws up but come to find out you may not so if you have a hard time pulling a bezel loose double check to make sure you have all the screws out and when you had the palm rest removed. Unplug this connector from the main board. It goes to the touchpad. Now set your palm rest to the side. Okay, finally, now we can actually replace a CPU on this, on this machine. And I'll make a separate video on how our laptop's cooling system works, and I'll discuss some, some flaws with other laptops and that sort of stuff. Anyways, once you finally get down to this level, here, I mean, it's pretty simple approach to how you can replace the CPU in a laptop. You usually have four screws around your CPU itself, and sometimes you'll have an extra screw near the Northridge chip. Another laptops may have a discrete graphics controller along the line in the heat pipe system. Anyways, you remove these four screws. like so. And these are spring loaded. Similar to how some desktop CPU coolers are. I like this approach. It's a decent design. It works really well. It gets even tension on the CPU die. Now once I pull off the cooler, you're going to, those who used to work on desktops back in the early 2000s will recognize, or will bring, actually this will bring back memories. Go ahead and disconnect the leads to the CPU fan. Now this should pull right out. And it is. The heat pipe itself pulls out. The fan stays in place. I've actually been in this in this laptop before. But um notice this. Don't this remind you of like let's say the Athlon XPs and the Pentium 3s? While desktop CPUs now have heat spreaders Notebook processors never did get them because the cooling design does not require a big giant heat spreader because the die just touches the heat pipe. Of course, after you remove the cooler, here's how you remove the CPU. Insert a flathead screwdriver bit into this little dial and give it a turn to the left. CPU unlocks. Let's pull it right out. Okay, now I'm going to install our Pentium dual core CPU. I'll just drop it into place. And take our little flathead screwdriver and lock it into place. CPU is now installed. Now we'll go ahead and Get the die cleaned off so I can install the cooler. 
Here's how the CPU die should look when it's cleaned off. As you can see here, it looks really clean. Okay, I got the thermal compound straight across the CPU die. Now I'll go ahead and reinstall the cooler. I also went ahead and cleaned off the Nor Northridge chip too. And of course, when you're servicing laptops, it's good to replace the thermal compound on the CPU itself, but don't mess with the stuff that's on the Northridge chip. Usually on the bottom of the cooler, you'll see this blue little cushion that actually touches the Northridge chip. If you take that off and install it on paste, there'll be a gap between the chip and the um, heat pipe. So, should you actually have to remove that cushion, you'll have to use a copper shim as a replacement to be sure that you actually get contact with the heat pipe to your chip. Also, don't forget to reinstall the plug for your cooling fan. The cooler is now installed. And now it's just a matter of putting the notebook back together. And pretty much everything will go in reverse in terms of the steps. Once we get it back together, we'll see how it does. We'll see if the replacing the screen cable actually got rid of the lines on the screen. I don't know if it did or not. And we also got the different CPU in here. Okay, now I got the laptop back, back together. Now this is the moment of truth. Let's plug it up and see what it does. Alright, it's going to start up. Okay, we still have lines on the screen. So the cable did not fix the problem. So the problem with these lines is actually in the control of the screen itself. It's going to go into setup here. So I'm going to set the date and time and all that stuff. Still saying core to do a processor, even though this is a Pentium dual core. That's what the latest BIOS too. One and a half gigs of RAM. Tells you about the um, graphics, the audio controller, all that stuff. The battery in this machine is in such bad shape that it thinks there's no battery installed. And you definitely need to go ahead and set the date and time. So, today's date is December 21st, 2011. And our time is 4.28 p.m., so that translates to 16.28. We're actually, on this case, we can actually type in the 12 hour time. Go ahead and change the boot sequence. I prefer to have the CD drive first. in a diskette drive down near the bottom and we'll put we'll move USB storage device up one level so it goes CD to USB storage device to then to the hard drive and 
as you might be able to notice, those lines have already went away. See, they don't take long at all for them to go away. So this is why I'm not really going to worry about the issue with the screen because it goes right away. Because hopefully it won't get any worse than what it is. So everything here is set where it needs to be. So we're going to exit and save the settings. Let's go ahead and let it boot in the Windows, which this one has XP Pro on it right now. You don't have Windows 7 on it by the time I'm through with it. And of course, first couple of starts, it might take a little while for it to go through and look at settings and everything. These things came with a fresh install of XP when I got them. These laptops came from some sort of business and they wiped a hard drive and done a fresh install of Windows XP. And of course, I think these computers are way too good just for XP. They should have at least Windows 7 on them because they can run Windows 7 just fine. So anyways, we've got the processor changed out and the screen cable changed out. So the screen cable didn't make any changes. So evidently our problem with the lines on the screen is actually in the screen controller. Because like I said earlier in the video, this issue hasn't occurred with, doesn't occur when you hook up a monitor, the external monitor. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking up my CPU-Z program. Go ahead and run this and fix it eight in time because Windows XP adjusted it back thinking that it went from daylight savings time to standard time when it's already set to standard time. Of course in Windows it should recognize our CPU like it's supposed to. It recognized our CPU just fine in Windows and it's a Pentium dual core CPU T2370 at 1.73 gigahertz. And of course, this CPU is plenty enough power for the basic internet browsing stuff that it's going, that this machine's going to be getting used for. And of course, I installed the Core 2 Duo T, I think it's a T9300 or something like that. It's a 2.5 gig CPU installed it into that nice Inspiron 1525 laptop that this Pentium dual core chip come out of. Anyways, any questions or comments, feel free to ask.